What even is a dehancer? And can it be bought? use software is called Dehancer to make a video and in return they would give me the software for free and so originally I wasn't gonna put much effort into it but then I decided to make kind of a short film the thing that came to mind for me when I was approached to review Dehancer was the early few seasons of The Walking Dead I didn't know what it was about that show when I first watched it I didn't have the vocabulary to understand and articulate what drew me to the look of it. It was only years later when I learnt about 16mm movie film that I began to understand the texture and grit of those early episodes. I, like many others, struggle to explain the joy of shooting on film. These shots are from the last roll of medium format film that I put through the Holger that I just sold. I never had the chance to shoot motion film. The problem is that motion film's just expensive, like really expensive. Super 8 is expensive, and, and that's got a look, but maybe not one that suits cinema. Super 16, on the other hand, that's what was used for The Walking Dead, specifically Kodak Vision 3. And this is more expensive again than Super 8. When I saw that Dehancer had Kodak Vision 3 in its film emulation library, I decided to test it and to make a short that referenced the visual style of The Walking Dead. Now there's a lot more to emulating the look of a film or TV show than just the film stock, but it's a start. I did a little bit more research and, and looked at how it was shot. That quick bit of research led me to the fact that The Walking Dead was filmed on a panavised ARRI 416 with Kodak Vision 3 negatives. Uh, so that's 250D for the day exteriors and 500T for the interiors and the night work. And so that gives us a starting point. Lens wise, they used a Canon 10.6 to 180 millimeter zoom. And this is on Super 16. So we're looking at an equivalent range on full frame of 31 to 522 millimeters at F 7.8 or, or 2.7, depending on what you're trying to measure with the f-stop. Also worth noting is that he scrupulously avoided complex lighting setups, indoors and out, in favor of natural light and practical motivation. Handheld or not, we were stretched out on the lens, so the camera was further away from the actors. It makes them feel more trapped, and it allows me and the directors to play with different depths of field. So interestingly, they opted for the long end of an already long zoom. It's important to think about the details because even though something like Dehancer has all of these options and, and controls, you have to make some of the decisions in camera to achieve the end look. Even with advanced color grading software, you're only as good as what you capture in camera. The other thing that I'm hoping that Dehancer and this 16 millimeter film grainy look helps with is my subpar visual effects skills. I'm kind of hoping that by muddying it up after I do the effects on it, I can get a more a more passable result. And we'll see if that works out. Because basically, I don't have anyone to help me today. It's gonna to be a lot of filming myself. There's no, there's no one to be the zombies from The Walking Dead. And so, what I need to do is come up with an idea that circumvents that. And what I'm going to do is have zombies be invisible. And I know that sounds like a bit of a shit premise, but it's, this is just a film within a YouTube video to show off some software that I'm not getting paid to, to make. So 
We've got to be okay with a little bit of shit. We've got to be okay with it. Done a shot, sort of showing the AirPod, and I'm going to do obviously like use sound design to to bring that out. So hopefully it carries across. Yeah, basically there's these sort of invisible, shimmery uh, monsters chasing down the protagonist. He's sort of leisurely, leisurely having a lot of fire, which I'm going to have to do <laughs> in post as well. He fires it and he hears the crackle. One comes after him, chases him down. He sort of beats that one. And then as he's running away from that one, the crackle like kicks in three more times. And the drone shot, what I'm going to try and do is make it look like there's these three shimmers um, just sort of encroaching in on him and he just gives up. Well, that's a wrap for everything I need from outside. I need to do some inside stuff. So I've got some ideas. I don't know if I'll do all of them, but I need to do some like green screen uh, type things. Uh, just to create the, the monsters and I'm wondering if it's going to be clear so basically I've gone for this like Resident Evil style idea not Resident Evil, yeah. Silent Hill where you know like the, the, the radio crackles to uh, alert you that it's the bad it's guys are there so I've gone for like an airpod but I don't know if that's going to sell I was shooting by myself, I knew I wanted movement so I took along the head one from Edelchrome I find this thing a little bit annoying to use, but I did end up liking the results. I also opted to use the 70-200 for that long lens look. I also cropped in on the F. I also cropped in on the A7S's full frame sensor to the 35mm mode, just to give it that extra bit of reach, get it up to 300. And so that's how I gathered the footage. Now let's look at what Dehancer is and what it can do. So this is the DaVinci Resolve version and I've also had a play about with the Final Cut version. I actually think this makes a lot more sense for Final Cut. That's just because I think DaVinci's color grading workflow is so robust already that it, it actually doesn't need a lot of the features that Dehancer has. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice to have. It's got some really great features that DaVinci doesn't have, especially the free version but the amount it adds to Final Cut is bigger than the amount it adds to DaVinci. That being said, let's carry on. So I've got this project here. This is the color editor and this is the timeline editor. I've already put this project together. This is what it looks like. One thing I find is you do have to turn off the grain to get decent playback. This is the the Mac Studio, it's the base one. It plays most things really, really well. Unfortunately, with grain on, it plays this at around 13 frames per second. If you turn the grain off, and I've put the grain on an adjustment layer, if you turn that off, and this is so I can turn it off easily, you get back to that 25 frames per second. And so the color grade's still applied, it's just the grain that's on that separate layer. If you've got a slow computer, definitely keep the grain off until you're exporting. Other than that, I think it looks great. What I did for this is I took some reference from The Walking Dead season one. I actually just went to the trailer on YouTube and took some screen grabs. And with that, I sort of got the, the skin tones and the, the greens to how I wanted them. I ended up not going exactly with what The Walking Dead looked like, just because I liked the way it was going as I was playing about with it. So let's look at what Dehancer actually is. Back to the color tab. I've got one node here, and that's got Dehancer added to it. So Dehancer's down here at the bottom of the library tab. Add that to the node, and you've got this just like huge amount of things you can edit can be a little bit overwhelming but I think once you kind of figure out which bits you want and which bits you need you're pretty golden and then my standard way of editing with DaVinci is to, to grab stills and, and reuse them so let's take this off reset that node grade you can see this is flat as anything and uh, that's because it's it's s-log3 and that's where the first part of this comes in really nice so you can just choose a camera choose the 
the vendor, as it says here. So that's Sony A7S3 and S-Log3 Cine base ISO 640. And that adds, well, it looks like that. So that's not got any exposure comp at all. Nothing's happened to the temperature. It has applied the default for this, which is nice, is Kodak Vision 3 250D. If you'll remember back to what I said before, that's what the Walking Dead outdoor stuff, daylight stuff was shot with. You've got plenty of stuff to play about with here. You see on this one, this is graded already. I've moved the black point up, I've moved the white point. So how do I get this looking as I want it to? Let's look at this one. So this is the one that I've, I've played with already. I've dropped the exposure comp. So let's go to, let's have a play about with that just to bring it down a little bit. And then I, I want the contrast to, to change. So I'm gonna bring the black point up and the white point down a little. And that's just gonna raise the contrast there. See that? Now I'm not familiar with the terms on this, but print is another way of, of changing the exposure and the contrast. So play about with them, just bring them into how I to look. Color head. Now this is the balance between, as it says, yellow and blue, magenta and green, cyan and red. So if you wanted to sort of warm it up, add some red. Let's bring yellow. We'll add more green. You get the idea. I'm gonna leave that as is. You can also disable each one of these, which is what I'm gonna do with the film grain there. Because if you remember, I've got that added in my adjustment layer. Now I actually used a diffusion filter on this when I was shooting it. So I used a Moment Cinebloom 20, I think. This halation is an emulation of what that Cinebloom is already trying to emulate. So I'm gonna leave that as is. It doesn't really make a huge amount of difference here. You would expect it to do more on something with a light source in there. So something that's blown out, halation's gonna be around that. So this isn't quite looking there yet. So what's the difference between that and this? Black points higher, contrast, I've added more contrast here. So more contrast here. Play about with that exposure. I think one thing that D Hunter is going to do potentially is if you don't know anything about film, shooting on film, the way that it talks about stuff is very film centric. So, for example, here, pushing and pulling, that's changing the timings for when you're developing film. That's not just going to change the exposure, it's going to change things like contrast, things like graininess, but it's also going to affect your colours as well. So, Pushing and pulling is going to give you more contrast, but more grain, or less contrast, less grain, more realistic colors, maybe, depending on your film stock, basically. Again, you can disable these things as you go through and you're not using them. So once you've made all your adjustments, within DaVinci, you can just grab stills and that's going to exist up here and you can just apply that across your different shots. But if you want to take this over to a different editing software, or maybe you want to do some editing with this exact look in Final Cut or Premiere, you don't necessarily have to have the Dehancer for that as well. Or what if you want to be shooting and monitoring this look? Well, that's where Look Generator comes in. So down at the bottom, you've got the ability to generate a, a monitor lot or a, an editing lot. Nice and simple, you can then take that over to Final Cut. So what are the benefits in Dehancer for me? Well, obviously, if you've got an idea of a look in mind that's emulating film, and you don't wanna go through the process of having to find the film stock and cross-reference it, they've done all that work for you. But also, they've built in these extra tools like the input and having that log transform built into it, which is really handy. It means you don't have to wrangle a load of nodes. That's one of its really valuable features day to day, because I don't think you're gonna be necessarily using all the film stocks all the time. I don't think you're necessarily going to be putting film grain on all the time, halation, things like that. But 
just as a day-to-day -day tool that's going to really help you out, that input is really, really nice to have. The beauty of this software for me for this project is it's kind of hiding those really janky special effects that I've done. So here, this is this grass texture that I've added in where you can kind of see the invisible walking. That looks really janky, but I feel like with the film grain over it, just beds it in a little bit more. So I really, I do really appreciate that. And again, with these like crappy blood effects, I think just that film grain over the top, it beds it in a little bit. Now it's not perfect, is it? But that's not Dehancer's fault, that's my fault. I'm gonna add this short on at the end of this video, but I'm also gonna upload it separately to Vimeo because Vimeo handles things like grain and like film grain stuff much better than YouTube. If you are watching this on YouTube and you do wanna see some of that quality come through, then set this to 4K playback because that'll, even if your monitor isn't 4K, that should give you a little bit of extra uh, clarity and, and hopefully you'll be able to see the effects of the grain. That's one problem with grain, YouTube doesn't like it, it muddies it out.